So I've been hearing about Yin Yoga and Steve Ross for quite a while now because Ahava Wills is good friends with him, who is Howard Wills' wife, my family's healer. We spent a very long time with them, and she's been telling me lots and lots about him, uh, especially after um, I did the qualifying exam for my Integral Yoga teacher training, um, which was funny because she told me about this Yin Yoga class, Right, and there was a weekend retreat going on right now. I took the, I took the first part of it today, where uh, I you know walked up to some guy going up the elevator and saying you know hey how's it going? We had a great conversation. And it turns out hey it's Steve Ross. You know it couldn't get any better than that. Right, great, great, great guy trying to bring more of the joy and light into yoga practice, which can be so occluded by people caught up in the in the rigor of it. Um, and the rigor of it can be great. Okay, they talk about structural alignment, but one of the first things that Steve did was print out these sheets that he handed to us of different people's uh, bones. Uh, and what's interesting to notice about the bones is that they're all different, right? So proper alignment for one person's skeletal structure isn't necessarily proper alignment for another person's. And that's something I think that Steve really understands and something that yin yoga really exemplifies because based on its slow movements and its uh, deep working of the fascial tissue, uh, the fascia, excuse me, um, uh, it basically allows for actually better structural alignment because your body is working at its deepest level, right? And uh, so to bring it back to this integral yoga that I'm doing now, uh, I, I noticed one thing from this yoga teacher training, and that is that when I was certified in power yoga when I was around 15 years old, power yoga is very intense. It's like exercise, right? You're doing it in order to strengthen, tone your body and gain, and gain massive flexibility, right? But integral yoga was... A very different experience. It was almost like uh, getting high because you go in, you do this yoga class, and afterwards you're just floating in samadhi. You glide straight into it, and you know it's just a peaceful state permeating every cell of your body. It's totally, totally wonderful, uh, which I highly recommend if you've never done it. Right. So in uh, in integral yoga, we do a few things that make it sort of more flowy, but. Uh, yin yoga is a little bit different. I consider integral yoga a yin type of yoga now that I've done both. But um, let me just speak about this this yin yoga practice for one minute, right? So the idea is that in the yin yoga, just like in yin yang, yin represents solid. It represents darkness. It's the female energy. And what's interesting about this? is that we hold these poses for a very, very long time. And as we hold them, we come up to this point. It's a breaking point. It's an event horizon, in my opinion, that if you cannot move beyond, you don't get the full benefit. Right? I think about running, for example, which is a you know, terrible exercise for ruining, or a great exercise, excuse me, for ruining your joints. But uh, you think about running for a second, um, and, you know, you think about the runner's high, right? If you don't push past the intensity in order to get to that state, well, you never experience that high, that runner's high. It's the same thing with the yin yoga, that the work doesn't actually happen until two, three minutes into the pose, depending on whether or not you're doing um, uh, symmetrical poses. Now, this is fascinating because part of this isn't even working on a muscular level. It's working on a deep deep cognitive and spiritual level, right? Can you work past the pain in your life? Can you make it past whatever struggles that arise in order to deter you from, let's just say, your visions, your goals, your determination, your path that you're currently on right now? So you're walking down the road and you hit a fallen tree. What do you do? Do you walk right over it or you turn around and go back? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. That if you can work past the pain of these poses, and it's not pain, it's intensity, the intensity of these poses, and get really one with it and love it, well then, you know what? The next time you have a struggle in your life, how are you going to react to it? Are you going to want to squirm and, and flop like a fish and get out of it as quickly as you can like a cat who's got its tail grabbed? No, you're going to want to stick with it. And see it through, you're going to have the strength and the fortitude to make sure that you accomplish what you want to accomplish. And I feel like that's the greatest joy of this sort of practice.